Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, hump day, woo, woo, March 24th. There we go. Here's a look at our futures, and you can see we are really stuck right around this point of control where we have just been accumulating more and more and more uh, buyers uh, and sellers here, just battling it out, the three and the eight, um, apparently in a long-term relationship here as they are glued together. All right, yesterday we had... Um, yeah, we actually had an inside candle on the futures. So in, in the SPY, we stayed on the inside of that candle. We did have a bit more volume than we did on our green day on Monday. <clears throat> and when we were looking at volume on Monday, that was something that we had talked about that, you, you know, we didn't exactly have the kind of volume that says, yeah, I'm here to play. It was vanilla. Everything in the market seems to be a bit vanilla. But personally, like to each one of us, when they're your own trades, it feels like Rocky Road. Can anybody tell that I have a sweet tooth this morning? I'll tell you what. All right, so here is the uh, the S and P futures, and one uh, the other thing that we've been watching a couple things that we've been watching very closely the Nasdaq. We are still under that fifty. Now we came very close to testing it, touching it here in pre market, um, but we have not put in a concerted effort with some really good volume to push us over, close us over, and then continue us on. However, what this has done is set up some interesting um, plays coming up in the um, in the tech sector. As long as we're careful and watch for follow through, that is the first thing we need to do. Is we need to watch for follow through. Now, I know a lot of people that you're in a stock and you're like, okay, well, I can't go down any further, so you grab it because you assume that that's the bottom. But once again, and I know everybody's tired of me saying this, and I'll say it over and over and over, you don't know you're not at the bottom until you're no longer not at the bottom. You have to move off of it and show some continuation. Now, that's just not one or two five-minute candles that you need to look for. You need to look at it on a longer time frame, especially right now in the vanilla market. All right. So oil. I've been talking a lot about oil. Coming in how that's been weighing on us. We pulled below the 50 yesterday. Do not like that. Nope, we do not like that. Well, this morning we're pushing back up. Now, look at this pattern here. This turned out to be a bit of a bear flag. Want to watch that may be setting up here. We don't know yet. We don't know until it's completed. But potentially this is something we need to be concerned about. We did catch into a level here. Um, if you go back, also very light support so this is the volume that was sitting there so very light support um, in oil we have numbers out today we have some durable good numbers out we have Powell speaking Williams Daly and Evans a lot so a lot of Fed speakers we did see some movement off of their comments yesterday uh, this morning we have um, mortgage applications and durable goods the durable goods order um, that one people are really kind of leaning on and believing that it's going to be a pretty good uh, pretty good number. So maybe that's giving us our little bump here this morning. Okay, let's hop into some charts. I am still in my draft king. We did not close below the 8. We came down, we wicked through it, but we actually pushed up off of it just a smidgen here yesterday. And this morning we are a smidgen green on it. Uh, While well, the candle is green. I don't know where my option lies yet. <clears throat> my E-Trade has been a real unfriendly player this morning, so I can't even look up my option chains over there, so I'm kind of aggravated. But anyway, DraftKings pushing up off the eight. Still like DraftKings very much. We're, you know, March Madness going on. People love to bet sports coming up, coming back. People really getting into um, watching those. And, well, can't really, still can't do everything we want to, so we might as well sit at home and bet on our favorite teams. DraftKings. Um, and on there, I do have my cell set at, it's a 15% cell I have on there, 765, but adjust it to what you want. A lot of times we get really close to that 10 and then pull off. So like eight, 9%, especially if you're building that small account, um, take those a little bit smaller of a gains and then take those profits. Don't trade them. Take those, set them aside. Do not trade them for one month. You'll see why. You'd be surprised at how much money you'll save if you just save your profits for a month. 
And I know it sounds fun to just constantly trade bigger, but there is a law of diminishing returns because what happens is all of a sudden it turns red and although percentage wise it might be the same in your account, you might look at it and it affects you more because it's red and then what do we do? Ride the plane to the crash site. All right, let's move on. Yesterday we saw, no, there we go. I don't know why I can't get this to turn. Hold on just a minute, let me fix that. Okay, so coming in here to UNP, this is when we talked about actually the last couple of days in the chat room, but yesterday, look at this, we pushed all the way up just past the 8, which pushed us through the 50, the 20, the 3, and the 8 here. I like this look here on continuation and a close over the 20. That would be my stop. A close over the 20. Really like UNP. Um, the, the names that move stuff, because we're moving a lot of stuff. Uh, you think about anything from whether it be, hey, Lexi, whether it be infrastructure or just more orders for those durable goods, right? We're pushing them out. We, we put them on rail cars. We put them in trucks. So anything that moves stuff has been, uh, I, I like here. UNP, I'm looking at the 820 210. Now, why August 20? Well, simply because there's been a lot of activity out there in the 820. And, uh-oh, little atomic bomb just went off in Lexi's drawers. Um, the 820 had a lot of call activity. And so if that's where the, the big money's playing, then that's where I want to play too, even though I'm small money. So UNP, 820 to 10. Folks in the room, we're talking about Microsoft yesterday and this. Look at that beautiful cluster of moving averages we, we pushed off. Although we came back in on this candle, you know, we have some um, some other, you know, candle wicks to deal with there. I like the look at this. We filled the gap there. I like Microsoft um, here over the, yeah, I'm going to stick with this line, which is just a smidge above 240. So about 240.50 is where I like it. Um, and I'm looking at the 618, so June 18th, 240, over 240.50. All right. Well, you all know I have an issue with coffee. So back to Starbucks. This one did really well for, um, for a little bit here, right? We had a couple good moves, took a break. Some of you caught these moves here in the room. Like Starbucks, it bounced this fib line that you can see here. And as we move up, not a lot of resistance in the way. We do have a nice high there at 112. So, you know, a decent little move in there. And this morning, it is sitting at 106.25. So right in this area, I want to see this move above the 8. So 107.50 would be my entry. And it would have to close again over the 20. We're going to start using these moving averages a little tighter in our vanilla market. Get in around that 107. Nice $5, about $5 move up there to 112.34. So for Starbucks, looking at the 521, 110. So May 21st, 110. Well, if I'm buying Starbucks, I might as well take a little gander, walk around, drink my Starbucks while I'm at Costco. Looking for a move over the 200, plain and simple. Look at this waterfall of candles. Nice little um, bull flag here, right here, boom. So potentially hit this and pull back. So keep this on your watch for a few days. Might get a few candle break and then look for the continued move on. Right, We don't know that's what's going to happen, but that is the pattern that I'm watching here on Costco. Uh, the 618, 350s there are the ones that I would go ahead and play with. Yes, I do see that the 50 is really close to the 200, right? Still wouldn't mind catching this over the two, just over the 200, a close over the 200 for the play through the 50. Then use the 200 as a stop. Get a close over the 50 and move on. Use the 50 as a stop and then um, just kind of stair-step your stops up with the, with the chart. Last one here, Canadian Solar. Kind of a funky little pattern. I feel like this is somewhat of a funky little um, inverse head and shoulders. We had our cross back here, right back to this line that we drew in back here, actually. So I like the look of this here to move on up toward the 50, 
clear the 50, use that as your stop and move on up. 6, 18, 50 are the ones that I do like. At, as long as we get in over 50, that's what I'm watching for on Siskiyou. All right, that is it for me today. I hope you have a fantastic day. It is our spring break here. We're doing stuff with the kids, so I'm kind of in and out of the room. Appreciate your patience with that. Um, if you have any questions, always be sure to reach out. Heather C. at GivingTreeTrading.com, or you can hit me up in the chat room. Have an awesome Wednesday. Woo-hoo!